about 10 p.m. I just raised the sail. Now I'm gonna go pull the anchor up. We are departing Syracuse. Only 10 feet of water, so it shouldn't be that hard to pull up. We were anchored over here. I might have moved a little closer to the city, but it was nice and quiet over here and nice and shallow. Made pulling up the anchor easy. Winds are about five knots and variable. But I'm ready to go now. Kind of a late start just because it took a while to run my errands. Let's see if I can pull the chart up on this thing. How do I turn this on? All right, there's our chart. We got this new sail-proof tablet. It's an Android. I'm not a big Android fan, so I gotta figure out how to use it. But it looks like a nice tablet. It's waterproof, a little bigger. Let's see what's going on. I mounted it up on the Dodger here. So yeah, 270 miles straight line, but probably closer to 350, because we're gonna have to do a bunch of tacking and stuff, maybe 400 miles. So at least three days. Goes along at uh, about 2.3 knots. Not bad for these light winds. That guy's got like, a flashy light instead of an anchor light. Interesting. Interesting choice. They do the same thing. Have you seen that before? Winds picked up a little bit once we cleared the. Uh, here. And it's the next morning. Conditions are kind of light, but we're making progress. How far did we sail last night? Uh, 30 miles in almost 10 hours, averaging 3.1 knots. Kind of zigzagging a little bit here. I guess I could bear off a bit too, so let's adjust the wind vane. Oh, by the way. Pull this cord. I put it through this low friction ring the other way day because it because a lot of times these um, adjustment lines get tangled up around the tiller. That's kind of keeps it off the cockpit floor. Making some chicken and pasta for dinner here. The sun's starting to go down. Wind's lightening up. We've been about 70 miles so far. Well, the wind has died. Hopefully the swell dies soon. So the boat stops rocking. Kind of rocky and rolly right now. Just hanging on for the ride. Actually, I prefer the wind comes back. The next best thing would be the swell could die. Best if the swell dies, then the wind comes back. So I'll turn on the threshold alarm set to nine knots. That should be good. Well, it's day number two. Well, I guess actually technically day number three because we started that first night, but really just a little over a day sailing. Uh, we're doing okay, making all right progress wins. Kind of dies off and then it picks up a little bit. It's still pretty light, but we're going we're going upwind this whole passage so far. And uh, wind kind of coming from the the north northeast, which is really like the perfect combo for our the solar panels not being in the shade. Anytime we're going upwind, of course, the, uh, the sails end up kind of blocking the the solar panels. A little more and then also winds from the the north will put the sails on the south so that's not quite as good so it's, it took a pretty big hit we're down to 48 percent battery um i had charged up the little 10 motor the other day too so that kind of 
left them in a lower, lower than normal, and they haven't. I've got about, about half the energy. It's amazing the difference. Uh, as I with just like a little bit of blockage on the solar panels. Usually it's not too bad. Usually I get plenty of power. But I've turned off my little camera, and if it gets if it gets below 30, I'll probably turn off the fridge, just so I got plenty to use for the. Uh, I'm gonna leave the AIS on for now. Probably a far offshore, I could probably turn the AIS off. Um, luckily, the sale uh, proof tablet, I haven't even been charging that. Well, actually, the battery is, is getting kind of low now. That's lasted for uh, 48 hours um, without any charging at all. It's still got uh, maybe 20% battery left. So that gets pretty good battery. I got two videos edited. I like to do them in batches. So maybe I can get like four or five done by the time I get to uh, Greece and then I can post them all in a batch when I get good internet somewhere there. That'd be nice. Some people say that the videos are a little too short. So if they're too short, maybe uh, just watch them in a batch. If you join the Patreon, I'll, sometimes I'll post like five, five at a time and then I'll release them to the general audience like once, twice a week. Um, but if you want to see them in batches, Patreon. I think, I, think, I think you can join for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, and that also helps uh, support the content you like to watch. Um, but you can also just watch our free on YouTube if you want. And then don't complain if they're short. I think these shorter videos don't really make sense to make into longer, shorter passages don't make sense really to do into longer videos all the time because uh, uh, it's just not as much content to film. And uh, it's shorter videos are easier for me to edit and upload. Um, because once the videos get too long, if you're trying to edit it on your phone, it slows the phone down and then I got to divide it up and paste it into different sections and then export it out. And, uh, then every time it fails to upload, it's got to start all the way from scratch. And usually a long video will have to take two or three tries to get it to upload, which uses even more data. So short videos, less than 10 minutes is really ideal. But if I'm doing an ocean crossing or a big, you know, several hundred mile passage and I'll do it as a usually a, that, those videos end up being 30 40 minutes long I think this video will probably be well since it's 300 400 miles it'll probably be uh at least 30 40 minutes long I suppose longer video so let's talk some make some filler fill the content <laughs> maybe I'll catch a fish later that always adds a few extra minutes to the videos uh I make my videos on my iPhone it's an iPhone 13. It shoots good videos, I think. Sometimes I use a microphone if it's really windy out. Um, and then I edit them on iMovie on my phone also. It just makes it easier because I don't have to move the footage from a camera to a computer. That always slows me down. And then cables never usually work for me. And it works. Okay. It's a pretty, it seems to be a pretty simple process. And I can edit them anywhere easily. Uh, I don't really mind the small screen size. I might get the bigger iPhone next time. Maybe that'll make editing the videos. A little easier. I tried an iPad, it didn't really help too much though. So iPhone is a better size, I feel like for me. And again, I shoot it on the iPhone, so it's just, if it's edited there, it works good. I also tried this app called CapCut for a little bit. I like that it had time codes. So if I have to like, I don't know, put an ad or something, and then I give you time code notes. Uh, sometimes I use that, but it's not quite as reliable, even though it's got some cool transitions in there. So yeah, just edit them on my iPhone, and then I post them on YouTube with a cellular signal. Not messing around with any of the Starlink stuff until I get that uh, maybe a little bit more uh, mature and figured out. Maybe one day I'll get that though. It could be cool. But yeah, cellular data usually works okay. You can get a local SIM card. Uh, don't I had Google Fi for a little bit. Don't recommend that. Uh, they the data is not good on it, uh, and they shut it off after a few months abroad. And. Uh, and yeah, you get paid. I get paid by my, making my videos on YouTube. YouTube puts ads on the videos through Google AdSense. I don't really get to pick what kind of ads go on there. It's based on what kind of stuff AdSense thinks you will like, I guess. I don't know. And uh, I get paid through that and through Patreon members and uh, just donations through uh, PayPal. And it pays okay. Pretty fortunate to get paid to do the sailing I'd be doing any anyway and the stuff I kind of enjoy. I don't really enjoy editing the videos that much though. Maybe I'll get an editor one day, uh, but that's why getting paid a little bit is, is uh, helpful. Uh, so it keeps me doing the videos. Otherwise I'd probably get bored of it by now or just not do them as often. Sometimes I think about maybe doing less videos, maybe just trying to make them better quality. 
but I kind of, I think I'm going the opposite route now. I try to do like two a week and make them just kind of like mediocre videos or just like whatever I can, I can manage easily. Um, I like the quality to, to try to keep the quality up, but just not have it take a lot of time. Um, and, uh, that way I get, uh, if a video doesn't do well, then I have another video during the week that usually does a little better. And they, both of them add up to a decent video in my experience. It seems to be working that way. And then I don't feel so bad if I put an ad in one of the videos here or there, uh, because there's still lots of the stuff isn't advertised. Oh, there's a big yacht over here. Look at that. I think I've seen lots of before. We're being invaded by dragonflies and moths. Where did they go? There's three of them just stuck to the light. Turn the lights off. Get off of me. There's so many dragonflies. Where are they all coming from? Calmed. I'm gonna go for a swim because it's so hot this morning. Okay. Mangle this. Uh, mangle this rudder in. Come on. So annoying. There's about two to three knots of wind right now. Not enough to sail at the moment. I dropped the sail. Man, I, I like, I love the sail when it's up, but every time I raise it or lower it, I hate it for a few minutes because it is so hard to get up and down. I don't know why, it's just the material is still too stiff. Just like, it just, uh, it never falls into the bag. Even if I'm into the wind, it just, it just like comes down a few inches and then jams up. <clears throat> and I have to just force it down. Well, the boom's flapping all over the place, and this makes me mad. But once it's up, I love it. The shave is awesome. Today we've been sailing pretty well for most of the day, but now the wind has died and I dropped the sails again. So we're just kind of rocking around out here. I'm debating going for a swim, but I got my hair nice and clean and went for it and kind of took a little shower, boat shower today. So I don't really want to get salty right away, but it's still really hot and it seems pretty appealing. Maybe I'll just, uh, just soak my body for a little bit and the water cool off. Uh, so hopefully the wind has died lots of times on this trip, but it's always come back within uh, an hour to four hours. So hopefully it will come back again. Not much of a swell, so we don't need much wind to get moving. It's like the third real day of the passage. And I was finally able to be real productive today. And I got four videos edited and I built the projects for another six videos. Some of those might get combined into a single videos. So maybe it won't be quite that many videos, but still a lot of progress. And uh, maybe tomorrow I'll edit the next six videos and then I'll, I'll be able to upload them all to Patreon. So then I don't have to, I can just release them uh, one at a time on the YouTube for the next few weeks. And that'll be nice to have one less thing to think about. just came back only six or seven knots of wind but we are flying along four knots and the waves are going behind us so it's just this really cool motion really cool nice sail
get MR4. Really good win this morning. And last night we ended up with, doing pretty good too. We've got, how far? We got, I think we gotta press the button to turn this on. We've got 30 miles to go. Yep, 30 miles to go. And with this wind direction, we're doing four, doing five knots. And we're pointed straight where we need to go. So pretty happy that, that which means far the wind's gonna die any minute now. <laughs> but at this rate, we can make it there late tonight. So I was walking the deck this morning and there's a washer lane there. And uh, it went to the, uh, the bolt that attaches the gooseneck. Which is weird because that bolt fell, uh, the, nut, the nut fell off the bolt uh, a few weeks ago and I put it on with some Loctite so it wouldn't happen again. And now it's worked itself off again. And this time I lost the nut, but I think it, I've got a, I might have spares. It's a pretty large nut, like a half inch nut. So hopefully I got a spare of that. Today we are sailing to Greece, testing out the sail proof tablet. Let's me use the Navionics app I'm familiar with. So four day passage to get here. It was about 300 miles. And we got pretty good wind. Let's see Greece in here. So weird, there's no wind at all. From 15 knots to zero. So from what I've read, Greece can be, is kind of notoriously bad for, uh, I guess, uh, formal entry formalities and things. And everything, I'm trying to figure out how you're supposed to do it and uh, what, if I need to go to a port of entry or whatever, it's, it's very confusing. I did, I filled out some paperwork online um, for the cruising permit, but I didn't get the, I couldn't figure out how to pay it. So I hadn't, I haven't paid it. I think you pay per month you're in Greece. Uh, I think for my vote, it's $25 a month, regardless if you're in the Monday, it, for one day of the month or the whole month, it's like uh, $25 according to the website. And then it seems like there can be dozens of other little fees uh, with various port police. And apparently from what I read, like each different port police or town or will interpret the rules differently or has different rules. Um, so I think it's this is the kind of thing where it's analysis paralysis. If you just try, if you try to like figure it out completely, you'll just never get anywhere. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna go here. I, I don't think this actually, this port actually has a, I'm not sure if it has a port police office. So we might have to go to the next port, but uh, it's Saturday anyway, so it probably won't be open Sunday. So I might as well just go, go stock up on some food and stuff and try to do some investigation uh, tomorrow. And then we'll figure if we need to go on Monday up to a bigger uh, city or town or something. Um, but I'm, not, I'm really not looking forward to this. I, I, got, I got a few extra documents. I actually was watching uh, um, Atticus's, uh, Project Atticus sailing video because I met them in Malta a while back and they're just uh, like one country ahead of me. So I think they, they got to Greece a while ago and they had a video about <laughs> some difficulties. One of their difficulties was the insurance and uh, a cruising, like a, a, I mean, a sailboat license, um, which I had neither of. But I've since I finally found my Mediterranean uh, uh, coverage. Uh, someone uh, told me the insurance company they were using the network for my 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 boat. The problem was getting every every company denied me because I had a U.S. flag boat. Um, I don't, just couldn't understand why. It's just some technicality or something. But this company covered me, and it even has the uh, Greek translation, which was a problem Atticus uh, sailing had. Uh, they didn't have the special Greek wording, uh, but mine it automatically came with a translation in Greek and it's got the stuff, so that's no problem. The other issue was the uh, um, boating license, and I don't think I should need it because my boat is only 18 horsepower, but uh, I don't have a boating license. You don't really need one in the US. I did find out there's a Florida boating uh, cert safety certificate, so I went online, it was a free course, I took that, so I have a little printout that, or a little scan of a, a little PDF document that says I have a Florida boating uh, certificate. So that's that's what I've, all I've got. We'll see if that works. Um, 
But hopefully I won't even need that. I think it depends on the port you go to. So hopefully this will get a port officer that's in a friendly mood. And the reason I wanted to go to this port here, it's uh, kind of a smaller town, is because... I'm trying to meet up with Joe Bennett of uh, Joyrider TV, uh, or Joyrider like YouTube, uh, Beach Catamaran Sailing YouTube channel. Uh, he's got some really excellent videos, uh, like with everything related to Hobies and uh, similar like beach catamarans and racing and things. And every time I have like a, an issue I need to look up about my, my catamarans, I watch his videos. Um, he actually reached out to me a while back uh, and wanted to meet up and do some sailing. So I'm pretty stoked to get a sail with him. Hopefully get some good weather. And uh, I mean, if not, I'm just gonna wait around until we do get some good weather because I'm really looking forward to this. I love the sa little sailing catamarans. And uh, I think I could, I could definitely learn a lot from him. <laughs> and. Uh, I got, lot, I got a lot to improve on that front, so I'm pretty stoked about that, that potentiality. So I got some bad news. I was just pumping up my dinghy, or motor, in the last two miles in, and I was pumping up this new Easy Raft dinghy, and uh, I got it pumped up, and I walked away for a couple of seconds, and I heard a pop, and it looks like this one has popped. So uh, we got to figure out how hard it is to replace one of these tubes, I guess. That's unfortunate. It's only the second time I've used it. And uh, I guess, unfortunately, it's also not the first time I've had a, one of these style things pop. I've had kites pop on me too. Uh, but I didn't, I mean, it's not very, the pressure isn't very high. I filled it up to, I don't know, just till it felt taut. I'm not sure what, what maybe the tube, sometimes the last time I had one pop, the tube got twisted up inside the kite and then it popped. So maybe that happened again to this. When you roll it up, you gotta be careful. Coming up on Vasiliki, that's the port right there, or the harbor. And I'm just gonna anchor outside for the night, and tomorrow morning we'll go check out the, see if we can get a spot inside the harbor. Anchors down and 15 feet of water. I'm gonna go sleep. We'll see what it looks like in the morning. So here we are this morning. I'm gonna go motor in and see if I can find a spot in the marina. And uh, there's the easier half to what it looks like half or one third deflated. I actually sat on it so you can ride it with one tube deflated, um, but you wouldn't be able to row it because one oar is in the water and uh, you could probably motor it with the, maybe with the Temo at least. So I think I'll put them away and see if I can work on taking it apart, putting a new tube in there. Of course, getting the new tube bailed out is gonna be the real challenge. So I moored up stern two. I did a pretty good job, I think. There was no wind, of course, so it was pretty easy. Got plenty of uh, anchor scope out. I think 100 feet or something. They were like 10 to one range, at least seven to one. So I feel pretty good about that because I think the winds get pretty strong, catabatic winds in the afternoon around here, at least from my experience coming in. Uh, so at probably in the afternoon, I'll, I'll loosen up the shore lines and move us a little further back and tighten up the anchor. But uh, the lady, uh, came by for the public marina and uh, it's really affordable here. I think it was only four euros a night for the marina. And then it was 10 for a car that gives me water and power, but I can use that other marinas too. Um, so pretty cool. So here we are in the marina. I picked the easy spot on the end and it went pretty well with no mooring, been mooring with no wind and my own anchor. I got it pretty far out there. I snug the line up a little bit more now. All right, pull out the scooter. <laughs> I had to swing the boat sideways because there was no way I was bridging that gap with this 80 pound scooter. Now I'm gonna go on a mission. I got my documents to go check into the country. We made it, <laughs> just barely. It took a little bit longer and the battery wasn't fully charged than I expected. Let's find this port office. It wasn't where it was marked on the map, so we just wander around now. Maybe it's in this apartment. Nothing. As best as I can tell, this is it. But it seems to be just an apartment building. I, there was not a whole lot of wind to windsurf today, so I am taking the scooter on a mission just to explore the island, and I'm having a blast. These roads are awesome. They're nice and windy, and not a lot of traffic going just so fast and the views are just incredible.
Today we are walking over to meet Joe Bennett of uh, Joyrider TV YouTube sailing channel. Super stoked to meet up with this guy and hopefully do some uh, catamaran sailing. I'm here with Joe Yo. of Joyrider TV at uh, Vasiliki. Vasiliki. Yeah. We're in Vasiliki. We're going to do some catamaran, beach catamaran sailing. Pretty stoked. Maybe take out the spinnaker. Yeah, we're going to sail a Hobie Tiger, 18 foot long catamaran with a uh, asymmetric spinnaker and dagger boards. All right. How many seasons do you get out of a sail here? Um, main sail probably about five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's pretty good because they, a lot of the boats we have like this, like rigged. Yeah. You just leave them up all, all day. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, a lot of you the jibs probably two. Oh, oh you get less of the jibs. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time you're attacking the yeah. sail. Okay, so because this boat's got centre boards, rather, uh, dagger boards, sorry, yeah. rather than centre boards, what we what we need to do is we just put them off a bit um, before we put the spinnaker up. Okay. So what we want to do is make as many preparations as possible yeah. before we actually put it up. Yeah. Because once we put, put the spinnaker up, yeah. especially if you're on your own, uh, it's commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it does take, it's a bit of a, you've got your hands full of yeah, yeah, so you can't really do anything else. Yeah. On your boat with the, the pivoting centre yeah. We just leave them down all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't worry about bringing them up at all unless it's for shallow water. Okay, really? Okay. Yeah. So that's easy. Uh. Um, and then the key with sailing with the spinnaker uh. is all the power is in the steering. We only use the sail going downwind. Right. Oh, this is no, no, I need, yeah, rudiment it's great. And rudimentary it's uh, the... equipment uh, yeah. information. Okay, so we only use the spinnaker when we're going downwind. Right. And then the more we turn towards the wind, ah. so towards the beam reach, yeah. the more power we're going to get. Sure. So okay. we'll go faster, and the more we turn to straight downwind, the less power we're going to get. Okay. So power. it's kind of like the opposite that you'd be used to, because if you, you know, very traditional on a sailing boat is when you're sailing, if you get too much power, you turn into the wind. Yeah, but yeah. with a spinnaker, yeah, you have to kind of reverse your brain a little bit. Okay, and then the other thing is, if it's windy, when we put the spinnaker up on a boat like this, we want to have the main sheet quite tight, okay. because it acts like a backstay, and oh, it will support okay. the top of the mast. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. But um, it's not so windy, uh -huh. so what we can do is, if you want to take the boat downwind, okay. and if you just watch, we've got these tapes on the front, it's a wind indicator. Okay. The cheapest wind in the Oh yeah, sold VHS. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to have this going at least straight across the boat like that. Okay. This is our apparent wind. That is our traditional downwind sailing angle for catamarans. Okay. So if we weren't using a spinnaker, we'd just pin it in there. Yeah. And we'd steer the boat to those. Okay. But because we are using a spinnaker, we'll just go a little bit further downwind. Okay. And then. On this boat, we've got a two-line system. Okay. There's two ways. I'll explain this later. But sure. So the first line, we're going to pull the spinnaker to the end of the pole. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, and then the second line, this is going to pull it up. Okay, and then the sheet is just... Oh, so it's so slick. Okay. It's easy yeah and then because it's an asymmetric spinnaker yeah it means we don't have to worry about the pole uh, we don't have to, all we're doing is we're sheeting it like a big jib yeah and then with the sheeting what we're trying to do is keep it as loose as possible but so it's not flapping so we're yeah. just looking at the front edge easing it out until the front edge just starts to go like yeah. it is there yeah. and then we bring it back in because uh, yeah. That's the only way that we know that it's not too tight. Should I travel down or am I...? Oh no, this is fine, because okay. you'll see like the tape on the front, the wind yeah. indicator. Oh yeah, now... You see our apparent wind right. angle now. Right, yeah, yeah. So that's because we've increased the induced wind so much. Ah, okay, okay. Now I would go behind this 16 here. Okay. So with the spinnaker up, if you ever have to choose to go upwind around something or downwind around something, the safer is always downwind. 
because right, you, right, right, because then you have the room to go further down. With. Exactly, and if we go upwind, we're going to be putting more power on. Yeah, okay. and, and you're there's, only, to keep going. there's only so much power, power you yeah. can put on. We go up a little bit. So, yeah, maybe bring the main sheet in a bit more as well. Okay. We'll just focus on your steering while you're putting in the main. Oh, yes. You know what I'm gonna do wrong before I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
ne the next one, which you'd probably have on your Mist Air, yeah. is um, you, you might have the mass rotation control. Yes, I have that this, too. This I is a uh, real sort of um, mystery if you don't know what. So um, if we're going downwards, we can let it off completely. So this is what the restrictive system. Okay. So if you let that off, the mast is allowed to go around more. Ah, okay. And then if we're sailing upwind in really strong wind, we can pull it in more, and that helps flatten the whole rig. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. A bit of alcohol on, just because. Um, what we want with the, the bottom, so the outfall uh, on these boats just controls the bottom part of the sail, okay, up to the bottom batten effectively. Okay. And um, what we want is the bottom part of the sail to slightly flatter than the rest. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unless we're sailing in like big waves, right? In which case we'd set it pretty much the same. Okay. Um, why is that in big waves? It just gives more power lower down. thing with the outfall, and this this would be the same for all boats, yeah. is once you've set the outfall once, uh, you don't really need to worry about it when the wind gets stronger, because as you increase the tension in the downfall, this is actually going to stretch this part of the sail more, because we're bringing this point down, uh, okay, okay. so the so distance is, uh, yeah, so this actually is like what we want. That's your, like, your main, your main. But most important is if on your boat you've got an older sail, yeah. is don't pull the outfall on really tight, uh -huh. um, especially if you don't have any downfall. Oh, then you're going to be because you're going to over tension it. And like um, you could split the sail here. Yeah. The way that you know it's a lot to remember, yeah, yeah. unless you've got it on video. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the, the way to to see if you've got the outfall on too tight yeah. is if your boat sat on land. If this bottom part of the sail has gone loose, yeah. like because the boom's lifted, right. then that means when you sheet in, you're going to overstretch the bottom of the sail and you could damage it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a whole new world for me. Yeah. Like, uh, and I, I just got new sails and I'm trying to like, the, the cool thing about that is my old sails are so bagged out, you know, like, that the, when you would do things that should have certain effects, they yeah. just wouldn't have really affect it. Just, it. And now it's like, like, oh wait, this is, is actually supposed to change that. You know, it's like it's like more a textbook, you know. Things. Yeah. Yeah. So what you read about actually works. Yeah, it's actually yeah. kind of like having an effect. It's like, okay, now it's getting me more interested in like you know trying to sail a little better. Whereas if your sails are effectively like elastic. Yeah, like it's just whatever like, you, you, you do, you make it just these stretches. changes. It just doesn't. Yeah, yeah. the thing it's supposed to. And uh, you get like kind of the opposite effect. Sometimes it's just unpredictable. We'll start off by pulling out the tack line, which is the purple one. Yeah, so just pull it all the way to the end of the pole. Okay, and then the halyard comes from the mast. Is that it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. So just keep going until it's at the top. And then pull it upwards to cleat it once you pull it all the way up. All right, that's cool. And then the sheet is the black and green. Cool. Yeah, so just keep sheeting, keep sheeting in until it stops flapping. So a little bit more. The higher the slack is like being taken up in a... Yeah, in the retrieval, so it's all like one big loop. 
So this end. Oh, okay, so that goes. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you don't have this extra and pull that together. Yeah. Okay, okay. So originally the small boats like this didn't have the chute on the pole. Oh. They'd have a bag on the trampoline. So you'd actually have to bring it in by hand. Oh, okay. But then I it, think that's how mine's set up now, but I want to okay. set it up like I want to... Yeah. Because I, I, I got I to gotta do a pole and a bet and everything mm -hmm. anyway, so like... Yeah, I've made a video which um, it says if you want to, it's about... If you want to put a spinnaker on your boat, it's yeah. a complete shopping list of everything you need. Yes, I started looking at that and like, yeah, that's what I'll, I'll go through that again. So when we jive, thank you, um, just ease it out, okay. and then as soon as the spinnaker's further forwards than the jib, yeah. then you can pull it across. Okay. All right, you ready? Yep. All right, here we go. drop it okay so first thing to do is let go of the sheet yep. take the retrieval line which is that one and just yep. pull it as much as you can just until it's tight yep. and then to release the halyard you just pull this oh. that takes it out of the cleat and it'll be a bit of a pull to get that sort of lump in and then we just have to release the tack line the purple one that's it, and then you can pull it in the rest of the way. Yeah. Nice, and there it is. Thanks for watching, and a massive thanks to Joe for uh, hosting us there in Vasiliki. Had so much fun out on that catamaran. What a blast. If you are have any interest in sailing or catamaran sailing or just sailing in general, I think catamarans, like those little beach catamarans, are an awesome way to start. And his channel just has like it is the authority on anything beach catamarans basically he's been doing it forever and has way better editing and uh commentary and audio and stuff than than i i showed so give it a subscribe if you're interested um also this is the first video i've had an editor do the editing trying to experiment with that seeing how it goes so let us know if you uh liked it or if there's anything you didn't um we could always use the feedback to know if we should uh, continue doing it or make any changes uh next video will be sailing to argos de Oy to try to try once again to check in to the country of greece and, and then the next following videos will be sailing to the rest of the greek islands got a whole series of greek sailing coming up so i uh, hope to see you next time